Hello, check test. Are we live? Hello, hello. Hello, check test. Awesome. All righty. Well, oh, I'm actually just a minute early tonight. Oh, well, better early than late, I guess. Hi, how are you all? Welcome to the live stream for tonight. We'll get started as usual here in a minute. Uh, if you have an RV-related question, be sure and kick it over there into the chat window, and I'll try to answer your questions. I thought maybe what I'd do to start with tonight is I got some really uh, good comments this past week. I wanted to just uh, go back and touch a couple of those. <clears throat> so usually I'll drag my feet a little bit while we wait for a few more people to get connected. Um, and so I'll give you a quick update on my dad who will be home tomorrow and I'm starting my 12th week here in Northwest Arkansas and I'm ready to go home I figure I got two more weeks and I guess my plan is I'll probably head for home around the 15th uh, if everything goes good so we'll see how that works out but he's doing fine should be home tomorrow um, Roundtown Scooter is in from, oh, Scouter. Oh, why does that look like Scooter? Maybe I need to put my glasses on so I can read, huh? Yeah, it's definitely Scooter. Scouter, I mean. I, <laughs> Matthew Tola on Lake Michigan. Hi, Matthew. Tom Downey. How are you this evening, Tom? <clears throat> nice to have you in. So, uh, we probably won't be seeing our uh, Alabama and Louisiana friends tonight. <laughs> I don't think they have any power. Uh, at least, at least a couple of the folks that I know uh, have been regular viewers or down in the area that have been impacted by was it Ida, and so they may not have power, and they may not even be in their homes for all we know. But it'll be interesting to see if uh, they make it in tonight. Getting by. Yeah, I hear you there, Tom. I'm getting by. Um, so here's Jesse in uh, uh, Rogersville, Tennessee. Hi, Jesse. Great to have you in tonight. Uh, you're a new one in for the chat, and we're happy to have you in. Um, it's okay to leave the gray tank open, yes, uh, if you make a curb in the hose to create a P-trap. Yeah, that'll help keep the sewer gases out. Um, it goes both ways on this. You'll find people that say never leave the, the gray tank open, and then you'll find some that leave say leave the gray tank P-trap open. Now, personally, in the winter, when I was parked static for the winter, um, I would generally leave my gray tank valve closed. But what I would do is, oh, say once a month, I would, when I go out to flush my black tank, because you never, ever want to just leave your black tank valve open. Uh, but when I'd go out to flush my black tank, I'd close both valves and then let my gray tank fill. <clears throat> and then um, it seemed to work okay. I really never had any trouble with it that way. So, yes, I would say it is okay. Uh, if you occasionally fill that gray tank, I'm assuming you're probably sitting static, uh, maybe in like a weekend or something like that. But occasionally fill that gray tank up with some water. Uh, that'll just help keep it flowing nicely. So, uh, great question, though, uh, Jesse. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, Dad's doing great. Joanne L. Glick, um, welcome. You're new to the channel as well, and I'm happy to have you in here. Uh, going to going remote for work and living full-time in camper, which is the best system to go with to connect the Internet and have a secure connection. Okay. Uh, I get this question <clears throat> every once in a while, and... I actually started an article on this that should post on my website here in a couple of weeks, but I'll give you the crux of it tonight. If you have to have internet to do your work, then you need something more than Wi-Fi, which then leads to either cellular or satellite. Um, I think right now cellular is probably your best bet. I know that Starlink is coming along and they're allowing the subscriptions to roam. Uh, before on Starlink, you couldn't move. You had to be in one fixed position. But I would go cellular, and then I'd also look for like a cellular booster. 
Um, I have several videos on my channel around uh, a cell booster and how I used a cellular booster and my cells, uh, you know, my Verizon uh, cell phone uh, as a hotspot. Uh, you can get the MiFi hotspots and those sorts of things. And that would be my recommendation um, is to get a Wi-Fi hot or get a hotspot, cellular hotspot, and do it that way. Uh, that's going to be secure. I would look into, if you need real security, then I would look into something like uh, the Nord VPN, not sponsored. Uh, that seems to be one that rates up there pretty good. There's several others out there. And all a VPN does is allow you to connect to a server through an encrypted connection uh, so that nobody can sniff that traffic and decode it. Um, and then from the Nord server, wherever it might be, then you go to the internet from there and they have antivirus and filtering and all things going on on the VPN server as well. Uh, and that will keep that connection from your uh, wireless connection up to the internet cloud, if you will, secure. Uh, and that's fairly inexpensive. Those personal VPNs like that are 2 or $3 a month. A cell booster, if you get a good one, you're probably going to be into it for 500 and then, as far as data plans go, um, I thought I saw, oh, the other day, I thought I saw a wireless uh, data plan from Verizon that was almost like unlimited. Um, but if you think you're going to try to use Wi-Fi, the dirty little secret is, is that in RV parks, I've been consistently disappointed with the Wi-Fi. Usually it says right when you check in and you get your Wi-Fi password, no streaming. So that knocks out all of your Netflixes. Uh, even Zoom calls technically are streaming. Um, and the second thing is, is you got a hundred other campers in there trying to use that Wi-Fi. And so the connectivity is going to be poor. Uh, you're going to end up with a lot of latency or delays. And so I think the most secure, fastest, most reliable way to do that is through cell. And that's to get yourself a, either a hotspot uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm lucky. I have a grandfathered unlimited data plan on my cell phone. And I've had this, well, I've had that plan since 2000, so 21 years. Um, and I got it for 30 bucks a month. And I'll never let it go because it's like insurance. It's like gold. Um, when I was full time and in the winter, I could run 400 gigs a month easy. Uh, but I watched, you know, I watched almost all streaming TV. Uh, I rarely watch off-air TV. Um, so, you know, I watch Netflix, Prime. Well, <clears throat> I guess I do stream TV. I stream Pluto TV. There are several others out there that are good for streaming. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's my take on that. I hope that helps you there, Joanne. Hello, E Square. Great to have you in from Michigan. Tim Myers, I'm going to actually chat about one of your comments in just a minute. Bob Davis from Eureka. Uh, good news about my dad. Yeah, thanks, Bob. And by the way, I love Eureka. Uh, in 1981, I took a little road trip uh, for my 21st birthday along the Oregon coast down into California. And I overnighted at Eureka. Really cool little town. I loved it up there. <coughs> Sue Kelly, awesome to have you in tonight. Thanks. Uh, no problem with no questions. Uh, we love having you in the stream. Tim Meyer says, uh, I have unlimited, but it slows down when I hit the 10 gigabyte level for the month. Yeah, mine is unlimited, unlimited. They don't slow it down. They don't throttle it, any of that stuff. So uh, that's why it's so valuable. Yes, my phone does work as a hotspot. Uh, this is the variety. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This is a Samsung <laughs> GA S8, something like that. Um, I don't remember what it is. <laughs> I got it a couple of years ago. I tend to run like four years, try to get four years off my cell phones. Uh, so uh, I think it's an eight, uh, and it has the hotspot on it, and that's what I used. <laughs> and then in my RV, sorry, my allergies are still killing me down here. I'm, I've gotten better. But, yeah, it's it's the molds and the ragweeds and stuff like that. It's completely different mold profile than what I'm used to. 
as far as uh, allergy stuff goes. Yeah, uh, Tom da uh, Tom Downey says he has a hotspot on his phone, but he needs big data. Yeah, um, they can uh, chew up a lot of data real fast. Uh, you got to be careful, especially when you're streaming. Uh, that eats a lot of data. Carl Jones in from South Carolina and <laughs> Tim Myers, Rut Row. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just slip over here for just a second and uh, review a couple comments that came in. And uh, I won't I won't reveal names uh, to protect the innocent, wink, wink. But uh, I got this comment from uh, a gal that says, My husband informed me, our RV search, I'm in charge of black water, gray water. He hates poo. And, <clears throat> of course, that was in response to my uh, easily get rid of black tank smells in your RV. And I, I wrote back to her. He told me, oh, uh, I says, uh, follow this method and you'll never have any issue with smell. And I'm guessing he never changed the diaper. Well, anyway, we went back and forth there a little bit and uh, had pretty good fun with that one. Here's a great story. And this came in from uh, I Barnes. I'll say his name. Uh, we after, after we bought our present RV trailer and began using it, my wife was mentioning that she could smell sewer gas. But after stopping for a couple days at an RV park, the smell was not there anymore. The only check I did was to fill each P track with a cup P trap with a cup or so of water to make sure to seal <clears throat> to present prevent sewer gases from backing up. Though I did not think that was the problem, and I would agree with you. It's rare that the P traps, especially if you're using the sinks regularly, would go dry. This went on for two more years, and then I decided to do a remodel on the bathroom and get rid of the shower stall as we needed more storage space and less need for shower. Behold, when I was removing the paneling to disconnect the shower plumbing, I found that the vent line had not been extended through the roof. Suffice to say, things are much better now, and I also adhere to washing the black tank with water borax and dawn, and the tank is so clean, I could see reflected sunlight through the tank wall. <laughs> so that's a funny story. Uh, Tim Myers asked a question on my, uh, and he's in the chat tonight, uh, on how to sanitize your freshwater holding tank. And he says his, and he said his Winnebago manual has a slightly different twist to getting the bleach into the freshwater tank. Simply put the proper amount of bleach into your filter housing after removing the filter, of course, and then finish filling the freshwater tank thoughts. Yeah, that works perfectly. But as I'd mentioned to Tim in my response, you want to make sure you dilute it a little bit. So I would dilute the bleach before you pour it directly into one of those plastic they call them glass bulbs, but it's where the filter sits. Uh, bleach is really hard on plastic PVC, and so don't pour it in there directly. Mix it with a little bit of water before you put it in there and dilute it down a little bit. But that's a perfect way to get bleach in the tank uh, if you don't have like a winterizing kit like I have on mine. Uh, yeah, that works. That works wonderfully. <laughs> then I had a comment come in. It's borax, not borax, though. And, of course, I wrote back, technically, it's borax. Um, another one came in and then we'll jump back to the chat. Uh, if, uh, on my replacing, uh, the Norco 1200 in, uh, my R in my RV with the Samsung, uh, re residential. And this comes in, he says, I want to do this in my fifth wheel, but I never boondock. It's our, uh, at an RV park 24 seven on short power. How would I go about wiring it up? Uh, could it be just an extra breaker as long as it's big enough, like 20 amps. And then he goes on. But my response is. Yeah, you can use the extra breaker, but the fact of the matter is, is that most fridges, dual fuels, uh, use propane and or electric. Uh, they always have 12 volt, right? Remember, RV fridges always have 12 volts for the control circuits. But the 110 side is for the, uh, you know, the uh, utility side or the short power side. So there's already going to be an outlet down there. So you shouldn't have to do anything about moving outlets or anything like that. It should be all wired up. Uh, a residential fridge would no way in in any way, shape, or form draw more than 20 amps. I mean, it could only draw five max at startup. I know in my RV, on uh, uh, <clears throat> I, monitor, I monitor it pretty closely, or I did there for a while. And when it first started up, the inrush current, the amount of current it takes, you know, to get that motor turning uh, was just under four amps. And then when it was running like cooling normally, it was about an amp and a half. Uh, so residential fridges are super efficient now. 
let me jump back over here into the uh, chat and catch up. I saw a few things rolling by here. You're welcome, Joanne. I'm happy to help. Uh, any more questions about uh, doing that? You just let me know. I'm happy to uh, let you know what I know. Um, oh, uh, Roundtown Scouter. He says he thought that Joanne was asking if my phone gets hot while I'm running as a hotspot. No. And yes, the new phone, my old phone, my S4 Samsung, uh, it would get a little hot sometimes when I would run it, but I've never noticed this one getting hot, uh, running as a hotspot. I'm running as a hotspot right now uh, because I was having trouble it, oh, about three weeks ago with the DSL here at my dad's house, which is, you know, sketchy. It's, it's okay, but it's not great. The problem was, was my uplink connection speed, uh, sending the data out to YouTube, this video that you're seeing now. And I found that I could get a lot better up th upload speeds off my cell phone. So I've been using it during the live streams. Tim Meyer says, I have no gravity water port. Yeah, that's a good point. And that would be a good way to get it in there. Another way is you could pour directly, you could just pour bleach directly into the water hose and then connect it back to the spigot and run it in that way. Um, I know people that have done that, that uh, don't want to do it through the glass bulb or have a winterizing kit like I have on mine. Oh, Chuck C. asks, and this is a good question, what is a good ratio of solar panel wattage to battery amps? Well, that's, that's a really good question. And I would say that, I don't know if I could give you a perfect ratio. Let me say this. Get as much solar panel on your roof as you can afford. And the reason for that is when they rate solar panels, you'll see them rated 200 watts, 100 watts, 365 watts. When they rate those solar panels, that is with the sun directly perpendicular to the surface of that solar panel. Okay? That's where you're going to get maximum solar gain in the solar panel. There's only one time at one time of the year in the northern hemisphere when you get that perfect exact directly perpendicular to your solar panel excuse me there'll be two times depending upon where you're at uh, in the northern hemisphere and then the rest of the time that sun's going to be at an angle okay and so you're not going to be getting the maximum gain off that solar panel a 200 watt solar panel may on average over a day pull in maybe two kilowatts max um, because of the way the sun arcs over it and changes direction. So my take on it was, is I put 1,860 watts of solar on my RV. Um, I actually could have put one more panel up there, but it would have made the engineering and the wiring a little bit more difficult. So I stuck with the six panels that I have. The reason was is that I wanted to have that large solar collector. So on partially cloudy days, you're getting you have a larger surface to collect more sunlight on. Um, you'll never ever use the whole peak of the solar that you have on your rig. Like I have 1,860 watts, I'll never use that much. First case because my you know my solar charge controller is only good to 100 amps, and technically at my voltage and so on and so forth, I could really pull down about 110 amps. 115 amps, something like that. Uh, if I was using all, you know, the maximum gain, I have seen though on the in the, you know, the summer solstice, I saw 1440 watts, which was right at 100 amps of DC power coming off the roof. So I would say get as much solar, as many solar panels as you can, practically, and put on your roof, uh, and then. Uh, the battery pack will generally almost always get charged. Uh, there's a lot more that would go into it than that, but I think that's probably a safe rule of thumb is as many solar panels as you can get. Uh, Chuck says, hi, I had to replace my water heater. Um, CR uh, says, everything seems fine except my stove doesn't work normally not gas, unless I turn the water heater on first. 
So are you talking that your water heater has a switch that you could turn on and off when you want to run it on gas? Um, that's odd. Ask me, uh, answer that question about the switch. Because there might be like a valve and maybe the water heater is plumbed upstream of the, of the stove. Uh, and then where is the stove, the range, in relationship to the water heater? I know like on mine, the range is on one side and the water heater is on the opposite side. So that's kind of the questions I'm asking. Ask, answer those, CR, and we'll see if we can figure that out. Uh, Bob Davis asks, thoughts on a washer dryer in the fifth wheel as opposed to laundromat? It's plumbed already, not full-time campers. Well, I had a washer dryer, I had that Splendid 1200 was the combo unit, washer dryer combo, and it was vented. And it was next to worthless. <laughs> uh, you could do a couple of pairs of Levi's. You might be able to do two, two towels, maybe three. You could do the linen, you know, you could do your laundry off your bed, uh, but it took forever to dry. And then I started having trouble with it. And after I worked on it six times and it kept breaking, I just finally just said, heck with it, took it out. It's not a full timer. I don't know, you know, it's weird because, you know, people take their nastiest clothes and nastiest things to the laundromat. And despite the fact that there's signs up in a lot of the RV parks, no pet beds and stuff like that, uh, you know that there's uh, contractors, and I'm not saying that's derogatory, but there's guys out there working in the oil field to come in with filthy, dirty clothes and wash them in those washers. And so, you know, there's that side of it. Um, the RV park I wintered at, uh, I always found the laundry was pretty clean, but they had a person go around every morning and clean them. Um, and it seems like, yeah, in most of the RV parks I went to, I would say that I I felt like uh, that the laundromats were okay. Uh, a couple of places, like if I was at a national park campground or a national forest campground or something like that where they didn't have laundry, and I would go to a public laundromat, um, you know, I was pretty selective. I'd go around and look in the machines. Uh, to see, you know, if they're dirty before I put my clothes in. Uh, so I think it's a nice convenience. Um, it depends on your sensibilities. If you don't mind, you know, washing your clothes in, in a machine that have washed other people's clothes or their pets, beds, and stuff like that, then you're probably okay. Otherwise, yeah, I think it's fine. If it's plumbed, that's 95% of it right there. Uh, the other part, you know, is just getting it in there. But you know, typically the doors are more twenty, more than 24 inches wide, so you should be able to get a washer or dryer in there pretty easy. Um, are you talking about a combo unit or a stackable washer dryer, Bob? Teresa Gibson, how well does the geoseptic uh, system work on stationary trailer? I can't drive around to shake things up. That's just fine. Then that was actually one of the questions that I was going to get to, and so I'm glad you asked that, Teresa. Um, it works great. All you have to do is be a little bit more diligent when you flush your tanks, okay? So you have to have some way to flush the tank. If you don't have a built-in tank flusher, uh, you want to get one of those wands. But I'm just assuming you've watched my, you know, how to get rid of your black tank smells in your RV. Uh, and so just follow that method and then just be really diligent about flushing. And it works just fine. I mean, as I said, I mentioned I set static all winter. You know, and it would be like October, first part of November into April, well, and last year, late May, or 19 late May. Uh, and through half the winter, when the daytime temperatures were below, on average, like 75, I never even had to treat my tanks. They were just fine, and that's sitting static. Now, admittedly, every six months or so, I mean, you know, at the end of winter, I would take and drive off somewhere and slosh them around. But, no, it, it's just fine. The thing of it is, is that if you're not living in it full time, so I'm assuming like if it's a weekender, then here's a good trick. And that's to fill the tank with fresh water, uh, with a cup of Brax and a cup of dish soap, your favorite, Don, Joy, Palm Olive, they all work about the same. And then leave it set for the week while you're gone. I'm assuming it's a weekender. Then when you get back on Friday afternoon, just go pull the tank, put a couple gallons of water in it, add your uh, borax and your just borax and just use it for the weekend, uh, then flush it out and fill it back up, let it soak for the week. After a couple weeks of that, uh, it's gonna clean out and it's gonna soak up uh, the walls and it'll soften up all the crud on the walls and the floor. Your tank monitors will probably start working correctly again. 
so that's what I would recommend is that if it's a weekend or just soak it during the week while you're gone uh, with fresh water borax and, and dish soap and it works perfect you'll you'll have no problems with it at all hope that helps Teresa stormer <clears throat> tried your uh, Dawn borax method with some bags of ice today it felt cleaner ha huh. do you only use Dawn borax as your tank drop in as opposed to chemicals or other tank drop ins yes I only use borax and Dawn period never buy those chemical tank drop ins they're just a bunch of deodorant and a little bit of water softener and the borax remember not only adds oxygen to the water but it's a water softener and so that's all those drop-ins are. It's just a water softener and some perfume. That's why after a couple of days they quit working is because the perfume wears off. So yeah, I don't use any other chemical treatments at all. Just borax and Dawn. Uh, and the trick with the ice actually, and a way to really supercharge that is if you have a really bad tank, and you are driving or you can drive it around or tow it around. Uh, the ice idea is a great idea, but what I'd recommend is Put about a gallon or two of water in your holding tank, put 20 pound bag of ice, and then put two or three cups of coarse salt, like water softener salt or uh, Court, uh, Morton's kosher salt, that really coarse salt. Put that in the tank, then go for a drive for 15, 20 minute drive and let that scrub that tank out. And that will super clean the bottom of that tank. It'll slosh up the walls. Now, you don't want to get it too full because we don't want the ice floating. You know, we want the ice in a slurry of water, salt, and ice cubes. And that sloshing around, man, that, that will just sand out the bottom of that tank, uh, that uh, salt will, and uh, it makes a major difference uh, if you can do that. But the borax and Dawn and ice would work perfect too. But I'm just saying throw a little bit of salt in next time you do that, coarse salt. And really super scrub it, and they'll they turn out amazingly good. Alrighty, so back to the chat here. Matthew Tola sounds like a vapor lock, yeah. Eat travel happy hi, so happy to have you in tonight. Welcome. Cr okay, he says stove and water heater are approximately two feet apart from each other. It's so weird because flipping the switch to turn on the water heater, it's gas will allow pressure to build. My thought is a faulty pressure regulator. Yeah, that could be it. Um, are you sure that the tank is on fully, that the valve is all the way open? Um, and also, if there are shutoff valves on either one of the devices, make sure they're open. So they're not closed, but they're wide open. Uh, but yeah, that could be a pressure regulator for sure. They're not. It's not that uncommon for them to fail. So Tom Downey asks, uh, when we are near the last chance to drum tank, dump tanks, we do then fill the tanks with water and let the tank slush until we get home and then empty again. Then it can stay there. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's a great idea, Tom. Uh, that sloshing around really does wonders for the tanks. Eat Travel Happy. Geo works is awesome. Yeah, thanks. It is, isn't it? It works amazingly well. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. Those are always really helpful. It gets you, uh, YouTube to rank my video up a little bit. Don't forget to ring the notification bell uh, so you'll be notified when I have new videos or the live streams coming up. Don't forget the live streams are every Tuesday night at 7 Mountain Time. Uh, despite the fact I'm in Arkansas, I'm trying to keep that in my head, 7 Mountain Time, because I will be home in three weeks. The next time, well, in three weeks, you'll see me in my normal environment, hopefully. Uh don't forget to go over and check out my website at trbolin.com. Uh, lots of great articles over there. As I mentioned, I'm getting ready to post uh, an article around cell phone versus Wi-Fi boosters. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty helpful, and a lot of people ask questions about that, so hopefully that will be helpful. Uh, there'll be a video to follow on that, but that'll probably be in the spring sometime. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to tell you? Oh, I'm also an Amazon affiliate, and those of you that have supported me on Amazon, I just thank you so much. Um uh, it's amazing that uh, you'll go out there and if you have a moment, to, all you have to do is drop into Amazon through the link in this video, uh, which will take you to my Amazon store. It doesn't have to be RV related. It can be anything. I noticed that somebody in the last week or so bought a pair of pants. Uh, there was a pair of sandals. Um, somebody bought a desk chair, stuff like that. And I don't know who buys it. That's completely anonymous. But I see the item being purchased and I get a small commission. 
but you pay this exact same price. And so every little bit it helps. Uh, you know, it, it does cost some money to run a YouTube channel. You know, when you sit down and figure out the Wi-Fi and computers and cameras and all that stuff, uh, software to edit videos, all the sundry things, you're into it for two or three hundred bucks a month. And so, you know, it does help to have you uh, support me on Amazon. So thanks a lot. Okay, back to the chat. End of the end of the commercial. Oh, Bob Davis says the washer on the right side of the front closet, uh, dryer on the left. So you have room for two separate units. That might not be so bad. I think maybe why I was so sour to have a washer dryer in my RV was because it was the combo. I'm not saying anything bad about the Splendids. I think they're amazing. They wash the clothes really, really well. I mean, you know, your clothes when they went in there came out really well. And they're super efficient water-wise. Uh, but it just took forever to dry. And so that's probably my biggest heartburn. But, yeah. Tim Myers is a satisfied Borax user. <laughs> oh, okay, Stormer. Stormer. Told you I need to wear my glasses, but they shine in the light. Distracts everybody. Um, Full-time three and a half years, so it's getting pretty stinky at last campground. Yeah, the geo method will do it. You know, even if you're sitting static, just take and do, do the bio geo method, and you should be good to go on that one. Hello, Camp Goer One. Happy birthday. Linda just had a birthday. She just turned 27. <laughs> Carol Burks, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm a scientist, a geek at heart. Uh, my degrees are in ecology and biology. And uh, so, yeah, I was able to use a lot of what I learned in, in college that I thought I'd never use again uh, to help produce that video. And so, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So, Tim, uh, let's see. Are you re officially retired? <laughs> this this was, your, was today your last day? I think you said you're retiring on the 30th. What was that, Monday? Well, congratulations. Uh, where are you headed, Tim? Ah, CNS Schooler Project. Great to see you guys in. Um, I saw you dropped a new video here just the other day, and I haven't had a chance to go watch it, but it's on my watch list for sure. Great to have you in. They're out, uh, they're out in Tennessee. They have a great channel. The guy's crazy, though. I think he's working on two buses, a van, and a VW. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. But he's a, he's a great guy, and he's out in Tennessee. And you didn't have any trouble with that rain or anything, did you, uh, that, uh, you know, walk through Tennessee? Um, I had a friend of mine that got uh, a little bit uh, uh, wonky. Um, he had 12 inches of rain in nine hours at his house um he didn't have any real flooding uh because he lives you know kind of up on a little ridge and, but i guess there was water running in all of the gullies around him it was pretty bad holy smokes stormer says he had a 40 gallon tank he put in eight gallons of water wow um you're gonna have to soak that one for months get that one cleaned out wow that's a lot of poo <laughs> thank you linda oh mary stankowicz thank you so much oh and there's another one in there you super chatters are just amazing we're, we're jason uh thanks jason i'm glad to have you in happy to have you along with us tonight let me get back to uh, the chats here. I kind of got distracted, but thank you so much, everybody, for the super chats. <laughs> TR is the best. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, Tom. Uh, Tom Downey says, we've never put anything on our tanks but sewage. Now, in other words, what you're saying is you don't use paper in your tanks or you don't put paper in your tanks. I said that in my first video around maintaining your black tank, and I got a lot of heartburn from people. You know, guys would say, oh, my wife would never go for that. And, you know, everybody has their own sensibilities. Um, I just kept a garbage can right by the turret, and I would put my paper in that. Um, and it wasn't that big a deal. You know, every day or two, I would empty that. You know, a Walmart t-shirt grocery bag, uh, no big deal to, uh, you know, change the uh, liner out and throw it away. So, but, and it makes your tank man 
I'll get it out. It makes man, it makes managing, <laughs> it makes managing your uh, holding tank a little easier. It surely makes the flush easier. Oh, okay. Teresa says she's stationary several months. Have it pumped every three weeks now. Well, that's pretty good if you can go three weeks, Teresa. Um, here's a tip for you. Get yourself a five-gallon bucket. And if you don't have the ability to do the flush, uh, what I would do is, is get yourself a five-gallon bucket. And while the guy's there pumping your tanks, dump a couple extra buckets of water down that. Ask him to wait for just a minute or two. They're usually pretty nice. But yeah, just dump a couple extra buckets of water down there. That'll also help flush out the heavy sludge at the bottom of the tank. Uh, that's going to be accumulating because you're having your tanks pumped. Uh, but yeah, and do it rapidly. Hold the valve for the toilet bowl open and then dump that bucket down there just as fast as you can get it to go in there. And while he's pumping that tank, and uh, that'll help flush the solids out of the bottom of that tank, Teresa. You'll be a lot happier down the road uh, when, when you do that. Thank you, Sue Kelly. You have a great evening as well. I appreciate you coming on to the chat tonight. Wow, 37 concurrence. Thanks, everybody. Great to have you in. Don't forget, if you have an RV-related question, you can throw it over in the chat window and we'll get to it. Um, see if we can help you out. Uh, this is a safe zone. There are no stupid questions, only stupid answers. And they usually come from me. CR, do I have a solar video? Yes. Uh, there is a video on my channel of me installing my solar panels. And then another video of me installing my solar charge controller. And then getting a bigger one and installing it. <laughs> uh, when I got my first charge controller, I read the thing backwards. And I thought it was like 150 volts and 100 amps. And in reality, it was not. Um, so I wasn't getting all of the power off the roof that I could get. So I ended up going up to a hundred amp, 150 volt solar charge controller. So I could pull a maximum of a hundred amps off the roof. But yeah, there is a video on my channel. Uh, look in the RV how to playlist. I believe it's from, you'll probably find it in middle to late 2018. Okay, Tom Downey says, oh, he has, they have a built-in washer-dryer. We love ours, wash in the evening, then take them out in the morning. Yeah, you know, and that's pretty much what I ended up doing. Well, most of the time, really, uh, because if I was wintering in Arizona, like I did, you know, for five years, um, I'd wash my clothes, and then I'd just take them out and hang them up. Uh, you know, the RV parks I would stay at, you know, some RV parks are, you know, snotty about having some clotheslines up. But the RV parks I stayed at, they weren't snotty about it. People were hanging their clothes up, and totally, why not? I mean, you know, as dry as it is in Arizona. And in fact, the RV park I wintered at in Tucson had clotheslines down by the laundries. So you could do your laundry, you know, you could do your wash, and then take them outside and hang it on the line to dry. And I would do that frequently because, you know, I grew up, my mom would line dry the clothes, and you could that the smell of line-dried sheets and towels, there's just nothing like it. Oh, by the way, Tom Downey says uh, you were married. You've been married fifty-three years today. Congratulations, Tom. That is amazing. Well done. You're welcome, CNS Schooley. He says, "Ah, thank you." Married. Yeah, I heard what you meant. I read what you meant. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome, Camp Camp Door One, uh, twenty-seven again. Uh, I well, I guess I'm on my 32nd anniversary of my 29th birthday or something like that. Uh, Tom Tim Meyer says, "Oh, I have 13 day work days left. Retiring 9:30. Oh, okay, I'm kind of ahead of myself. Um, I'm, I was think, thinking it was 30th, but it was next month. Okay, gotcha. And then headed to the UP of Michigan in the morning for a week. Excellent. Yeah, uh, I'd love to go to the UP." Okay, there we go. Uh, Eat Travel Happy uh, had mentioned last week that they had a little trouble with some wind and ended up with a bent uh, awning arm. And he says he's got an update. Our awning arm has been repaired. 
Rec Pro could only get us the canvas. Lasso RV and Anamosa, Iowa got us the new arm in 24 hours. There you go. How much did that cost, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, CNS Gooley Project is out there in Tennessee, and he uh, comes back with a report on the weather. He says it collapsed his, on, his canopy. Understood. Tim Myers attending a friend's fly-in. Mary Stankiewicz, you're very welcome. Tomorrow, they're getting their first trailer. Well, congratulations, Mary. That is amazing. I am so happy for you guys that you're going to just love it. There's our buddy Aaron. Uh, thanks, Aaron, for being in. Aaron is moderator and super guy doing some camp hosting up in Amana, Iowa, at the Amana Colonies. Has a great YouTube channel. Run over and check him out. Uh, He's uh, great to have on as a moderator, always on top of things. Oh, yeah. Um, C CR says he has a bidet, and his wife and I use it religiously. Yeah, you know, I seriously considered getting one last year. Uh, and, in fact, a friend of mine, Andrew, um, has one uh, in his RV. He bought one of those bidet toilet seat will be dues things. And I know several people that have those and swear by them. And I thought about it, uh, but, you know, I got lucky when the – pandemic panic buying first started you know back in what march of 20 um i had just bought toilet paper and paper towels and i'm just used, you know i'm i'm good for six months on a you know a big bundle of costco toilet paper thanks linda Okay, when you use paper, it's sewage. Got you, Tom. <laughs> he says he doesn't use a catalog for paper. I don't know how many people on this chat might remember having to use a catalog or uh, the Sears and Robux catalog when you went to the, you know, the house with the moon on it outside, the, <laughs> the old outhouse. Alrighty, so let's see. Uh, Teresa, oh, thank you so much. Just started watching your videos and have already learned so much. You're very welcome, Teresa. And anytime you have any kind of question, remember it's a safe zone. You can drop it over in chat, and I'll do my dang just to figure out how to answer it. And if I can't answer it this week, then I make a note of it, and we'll chat about it next week. Camp Gorwin, Linda's been having trouble with her ABS, and so she says she has a mechanic that is going to figure out the ABS light and check out the brakes. He works on vehicles from his home, yeah. You know, some of those guys are really good, and they're really conscientious, uh, but don't pay him until it works. Sound advice. Oh, Jason Mills. Yeah, thanks. The smash the likes ratio is off. Smash those likes. Thank you so much. Yeah, that like really helps a lot. Uh, Camp Gore One, AKC, American Kennel Club. Joe Silvers. Uh-oh, my Dometic four-door refrigerator will not cool further down to 40 degrees. Only 45 to 48. I'm in Florida under a large tree, no direct sun, but 90 degrees daily. Okay. So there is one thing you can do, Joe, uh, to help with that, and that is to get some fans. They make a fan kit that you can put up inside of there, which will help move air through behind the, uh, the fridge. What happens is, is that when that ammonia boils in these fridges like this, okay, it gets to the top, and then it needs to start to cool. And as it rises, of course, it starts to cool. But if the top never gets cool, okay, the top of this, the coils, which are up the full length of the back of the fridge, if it's slow to cool um, or it doesn't cool enough, then your fridge doesn't get cold, okay? So there's a fan kit you can get. There's two types. One that you can get up on the roof. You take the roof cover off, okay, the vent cover off, and then you can mount a set of fans underneath there, which will pull air positively through there, and that will help with the cooling. Uh, and I've seen that help. Now, I did that on my old Dometic. Particularly noticed it when I was in heat and humidity, like Florida or Arkansas, here where I'm at now. 
Um, and installing those fans worked really well. Uh, there's another different type of kit that you can just put in that go up just above like the door opening, you know, where the, pe the penetration through the wall is to the back of the fridge. That's a set of fans that mount up in there and they'll pull air and shove it up through there. Uh, but they're like computer cooling fans, you know, they're like 200 millimeters, what, four, four and a half inches, something like that, five inch fans. Uh, but that's a trick that you can use to help move more air behind that fridge. And sometimes that will help it cool. But that is a very common complaint with the Dometics in hot temperatures, even though you're not in the sun, it's still 90 degrees. Uh, pardon me that they don't cool well. I hope that helped you out. Eat travel happy 500. Okay, that's wow. Okay, was that for the whole arm, including the the mount to the uh, RV and then the uh, gas cylinder and the whole setup there? Eat travel happy. Tim Myers, the privy, yes, the privy, the outhouse. Uh, Aaron says, wanting to change out the differential fluid on my 2000 bounder, having trouble finding rear seal thoughts. Yes. Pull the old seal out, go to a bearing supply house, uh, and uh, though there should be a number on the seal, it could be a national or a CR, and there should be a number on that seal uh, that uh, they should be able to cross at a real parts warehouse. Don't go to AutoZone or any of those jerky places. Go to a bearing supply house. Okay, they're industrial suppliers or an industrial supply house. Uh, but bearing supplies uh, is a good way to look for it. And they can generally order those seals uh, any size, any style. Uh, there's either going to be a part number on it. Uh, just be careful when you pop it out. Um, but, yeah, you're going to be able to go and match that up. There's nothing that unique about them. Um, uh, but, yeah, they'll be able to pull a number off the seal and match it up. Or they'll be able to take a pair of calipers. And I've done this before and measure the ID, the OD, the thickness of the seal, the edge material and look it up in a catalog. Um, so, yeah, but go to a bearing supply house and they should be able to cross it for you really easy. Oh, my. Aaron is camp posting and he says there's an AKC uh, thing going on up there. American Kennel Club. 450 campers. Five to six thousand, five to six thousand dogs. Just imagine all the dog. <laughs> oh, you're good luck, Aaron. Uh, Chuck C says, "Thanks for your answer on my previous question uh, on solar, but I have one more." Okay, that's fine. What's better, one lithium one hundred amp battery or two eighty amp AGMs? One one hundred amp lithium. Period. All right. Remember, with lead acid batteries, whether they're AGM, flooded, I don't care what they are, if they're lead acid, whatever the label rating is on that battery, 40, 80 uh, amp hours, you're only able to use half of that. All right. So even with two, if you're using half of it, you're still only going to have 80 amp hours. Whereas with the lithium, you're going to have the full 100 amp hours. So you're technically getting 20 more amp hours. And lithiums are completely maintenance free. Okay. AGMs, you still need to be checking the water on them occasionally, especially if you're in a charge discharge situation where they're charging and discharging frequently. Uh, they're, they're all, it's always good to check the water on them anyway, whether they're sealed or not. Uh, but I would go with one lithium for sure over two AGMs. Yeah, Linda Camp Goer once she says uh, my Dometic doesn't work at all either. Um, the other real problem with the uh, with the Dometics is that the coolant leaks out. Uh, the remember their ammonia that's ammonia in those uh, uh, fridges that they use as the coolant, and uh, the way that they boil, especially like on propane, uh, the the boiler will get a hole in it and the ammonia will all leak out. And the way to tell that is is if you look at the column the metal columns, the pipes, and if there's brown, a brown debris on it or a brown-ish substance uh, besides dirt, 
uh, that's probably an ammonia leak and you've probably lost all your ammonia. And the thing is, is you can't recharge them. It's like the uh, RV roof ACs. You can't recharge them. There's no way. They seal them permanently. They're not serviceable. Unlike your home RV, or excuse me, your home AC, where you can have a service, they can add additional Freon or like your R or your car's RV. But yeah, that's a drag, but. Okay, uh, Joe says, thank you. I'll get a fan or two tomorrow. Yeah, give that a try, uh, Joe. Uh, see if that helps. Yeah, I think it'll, think it'll help a little bit. Uh, Moral CM. Warranty AC question. Tech received my warranty AC from Dometic in March. He always has excuses why he can't install. Hmm. So the tech has your AC, but he hasn't come out to put it in. Uh, okay, Aaron, could you uh, snag that spammer real quick that you see there in the kanji fonts? I might be able to do that here in just a minute. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah, good. Okay, uh, back to the non-spam crap here. Okay, more, uh, Moral CM. Um, boy, I don't know what to tell you. Um, uh, if you're handy at all, you could install it yourself. It's not that difficult, okay? The worst part's getting it on and off the roof. There's four bolts that hold it in. You can go watch. It's not a, technically a primer on replacing the uh, roof AC, but on my roof replacement video in episode one, you see me taking it off the roof. In episode three, you'll see me putting the ACs back on the roof. In my particular case, and I think this is in general, there's only four bolts that hold it in, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, they're like three-eighths bolts or something like that. The electrical is not difficult. It's not rocket science. Uh, if it was me, I'd just go get not moral CM's message, uh, Aaron. Uh, uh, let's... Uh, Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we can get Moral CM back, Aaron. Thanks. Sorry about that. Uh, on the uh, roof AC, uh, it was the Chinese guy, but I got him deleted. Um. Yeah. Okay. I think we got it there. So sorry about that. Uh, okay. So uh, let's see. I think I'm getting this here. Okay, so Moral, I was uh, Morel CM. I was uh, answering your question. I'd give him one more chance. Say, listen, I need you to come put the thing on. And if he doesn't do it, go get the unit, call your buddy, buy a six pack, get on the roof and change it yourself. It's not that hard. Uh, and as far as the tech goes, unless he is a Dometic installer, in other words, unless he works for Dometic, uh, I don't know that there's any recourse. If does he work for an RV company, like a like an RV repair, you know, store in town that has a physical storefront, or is he just Joe Blow, RV repair mechanic working out of his house? If it's Joe Blow, you're at his mercy. I wouldn't put up with it. I just go get the unit and do it myself. If he's a Dometic tech hired by and paid by Dometic, then I would call Dometic. If he's a tech hired by and paid by a local RV store, Camping World or somebody like that, Joe's RV Sales and Service, um, I would call them. Uh, otherwise, I'd go get the unit and do it myself. Other, or I would go get the unit and I would uh, uh, call and find another tech to come put it on if you're, not ha if you're not comfortable doing it yourself. But yeah, I wouldn't goof around with it that much, especially if he's had it since March. That's bull. Whee! Oh, okay, so uh, E-Travel Happy answered my question about the $500 arm for his awning. And that sounds okay. I mean, you know, I thought it was a little expensive, but, yeah, it comes with uh, everything. Uh, uh, 
you get to, oh you only get the power arm not a left or right just put pull the wiring out yeah perfect uh, Teresa Gibson says I was having that problem with my four door fridge and it was as simple as making sure the flap in the center not completely pulled back into place it was sticking open just a bit that's a good that's a good call uh, that the flap she's talking about you know is there's this flappy deal that closes the doors you know and, and lays down and makes a seal between the, the double door um, yeah, that could I could see where that would cause a leak and cause it not cool properly. So I hope you got the right answer there, Moral. We got these guy, this guy here. Uh, okay, Tim Meyer says my Dometic is thirteen years old and works great. Thirty five degrees with ninety five degree outward outdoor temp. The issue is that the recovery time is so long. When I am loading in, my dear wife likes to stand in front of it with an open door yeah that's a problem you know uh, once you can get them cold they'll stay there but yeah cr constantly opening the door letting the hot you know like i remember my dad yelling at us you know when we were kids close the damn front door we're not heating the whole outside or cooling it depending upon what season it is so that's kind of funny Tom Danny says, our fridge uh, works great at 21 years. Yeah, you know, it's really weird that it's hit and miss like that. You know, uh, um, the other thing I'll say is uh, that it's becoming really apparent to me that the older uh, material, the older gear was made much better than the stuff that's being made today. Like a 10 or 15 year old fridge is a much better fridge than one made two or three years ago, just in the quality and the craftsmanship and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, two feathers. Sorry, I missed most of the show. The thing I hate most about being on the road is having to use a laundromat. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, two feathers. She asked any solutions. Um, what was it? Uh, I watched. Oh gosh, I haven't watched our channel for a while because it got kind of boring. Uh, Nathan and Marissa, Melissa, Marissa, something like that. Uh, what's their channel called? Uh, I don't remember, but their RVers are full timers. They actually have two kids now. Uh, nice couple, uh, but they had this unit um, that looked like about you know, maybe 24 inches in diameter and maybe 12, 18 inches tall. That was like a washer, wash tub. And it, you know, it was like a portable one and memory serves, they would put it in their shower and run it in their shower. Uh, and so you can get those small ones like that. They're relatively inexpensive. I've seen them on Amazon. Um, and so you can just wash it and then air dry. You know, you can just hang up, <laughs> hang up a rope outside. And if the RV park says you can't do that i actually rigged one up inside of my rig one time um i just you know uh, got a piece of paracord and ran it from the back to the front of the rv and then i just hung my laundry in the rv or there's a will there's a way but i think that's a possible solution is to uh buy one of these little portable washers um and then just line dry That's cool, Aaron. We're good with that. I think we got her sorted. Thank you. Stormer. Um, he was. He says, I was thinking about getting uh, one of those upgraded black gray roof vents. I found the RV black tank siphon vent. Any comments on the siphon roof vents? Yes, I have them. I love them. They work well. The thing about it is, is just keep it, uh, uh, the pivot, they, they spin in the wind, right? And so it's a Venturi system. So the vent itself will turn into the wind. It's really handy when you're going down the road because they're going to be, you know, pointed into the wind. And what happens is it causes a suction because of the event. The, it's called the Venturi effect, but it causes a suction as it comes around this cone and it helps suck the air out of the tank uh, and keep the gas smells down. Uh, I found that with mine, I had to dry lube. There's, it's a pivot. So here's like the pipe and then this, this you know, widget with the, with the arrow on it. It looks like an arrow, whatever. Uh, sits on top of it, and I had to dry lube those every once in a while to keep them spinning freely. 
but yeah, they're they're good things. I um, I recommend them. I think they're fourteen or fifteen bucks. You can actually find them on my Amazon store in the handy items for RV owners page. Hope that helps, Stormer. Mary Stankowitz. Good night and be well, and I'll report on our maiden voyage and celebrating 40 years of Mary's six children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mary, and thank you so much for your super chat. It's greatly appreciated, and we'll look forward to hearing back on how you did on your first camping trip next time. Uh, Brenda Yankowski, we pre-cooled our fridge in our driveway on a slight slant, Dometic. Yep, lost the ammonia. It was dead. Yeah, I don't know. They're not that sensitive to being out of level, although they say, you know, it says right in the manual that to run the fridge, it needs to be level. And the reason for that is, is that, wow, it's nine o'clock. We're burning through the hour tonight. But the reason for that is, is remember, in those ammonia absorption type fridges, it's, an, it's a boiler, okay? And so there's a vessel, metal vessel there, that is either heated by these two electric pencils, if it's on AC, or by a flame, if it's on gas, and it boils the ammonia. Well, you always need a little bit of ammonia, liquid, sitting in that vessel. And if you're on a tilt or a slant, that could change the way the ammonia flows back into that. And if you if that boiler gets where it doesn't have any ammonia in it and it's still getting heated, uh, it can it can cause real problems. Uh, usually that it takes a long time, though, like four or five days of being out of level. Uh, but I've, I've been a little out of level, never really noticed it. But, yeah, they're sensitive to not being level, that's for sure. That's a good point there, Brenda. And thanks for your great uh, comment there. Uh, Tim Myers says, I might say something like that, but I like living. <laughs> I always help pretty cool with ice packs, speeds things up a bit. Yeah. You know, actually uh, towards the end of the life on my freeze on my fridge is that I had six ready ices, you know, those Coleman blue ice packs or whatever they're with, whatever they are. And, um, I would keep some in the freezer and when my fridge would get to where it wasn't cooling well, I would move some of those down because my freezer always froze stuff. It, the freezer wasn't the problem. It was always the fridge part. And so I would keep some of those in the freezer and I would rotate them in and out of the fridge to help keep it cool. Uh, but that was, you know, that was a pain for sure. But that's a good way to pre-cool them uh, in, and is to use those ice packs. Uh, throw them in your fridge freezer at home and then take them out and pre-cool your fridge. That's a good idea. Tom Downey says, I was reading about poor quality stuff in several other RV forums. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of, I follow the uh, Newmar, this is because I have a Newmar. I've been following the Newmar forums, uh, and there's a lot of complaining going on right now uh, about Newmar. Um, and a lot of them, Thor, I've noticed there's been a lot of complaining about Thor. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that, you know, that's partly why. I think I've almost convinced myself to keep my RV, even though I was considering selling it. I, I don't know. I wish I could hurry up and make up my mind, but um, I'll worry about that when I get there. Uh, but I'm, I'm leaning towards keeping my 04 just because it's built so much better than the newer ones today. Jason Mills, disconnected city water from camper bin. When water pump inside kicked on, water started coming out the city water connection. Any thoughts? Yes. There is a one-way check valve inside of that city water connection port. And uh, it's like an anti-backflow. But what it's really there for is that um, it, when it closes, it allows the pressure to build in the pump system, right? So when you're watering the pump it, and the pump turns on, it pressurizes all the water lines in the RV. And so if that check valve is plugged or stuck open, could be through calcium, calcium line accumulation, you know, things like that, um, then that would allow the water to run out. A couple of suggestions to see if you can fix it. Get a small screwdriver, go out, remove. If there's a screen in it, pull the screen out and then see if you can poke in and out. They're real careful like. And if there's a piece of lime or calcium or something that's accumulated in holding the valve open, 
popping it in and out might help break it loose. Otherwise, it's an easy fix, uh, about a $14 part on Amazon. Uh, and um, Or it, it depends on your rig because I noticed that I was helping a lady up in the, uh, uh, the Lewiston, Idaho area uh, on one of my other videos. She was uh, in an email chain comment, uh, was talking to me about hers. Uh, some of the uh, RVs, the, the actual check valve is a part of the whole box. Right, so there's a box in the side of the RV with a cover lockable, and you have to buy that whole box. But inside of that, right where the city water connection is, there's a check valve, and if that's stuck open, and it sounds like it is, um, you may either need to replace that, but first go out with a screwdriver and poke it a couple times, three or four times. You know, don't rank on it, uh, but poke it, but you know, bounce it in and out a couple times. You should be able to feel it moving, and see if that helps. Uh, free up or lodge, dislodge any like pieces of calcium or sand or something like that may have got into it and they're holding it open. Great question, Jason, and uh, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, that question comes up every once in a while. Um, okay, uh, Camp Gore One, you have a great evening and uh, good luck on those breaks. E-Travel Happy says, we have a separate washer dryer by Panda. Love it. Works great. Yeah, you know, some of them uh, uh, some of them do work amazingly well. And I know a lot of people with stackables, you know, stackable washer dryers in their rigs, and they love it. Um, you know, I suppose if I went back to living in my full time, I might take, because I just took the spot where the fridge was and turned it into shelves. Those shelves could easily come back out. All the plumbing, everything is still there for it. Uh, so that I could put another washer dryer in there. I don't have room for a stackable, though. Well, I do, but I would lose a little bit more storage from underneath it because the way mine's set up is is that there's a storage cabinet underneath where the washer where the combo unit sat. Then there was the combo unit, and then above it was the TV. I put the TV on. You know, I pulled the old tube TV out and put the TV. You know, put a flat screen up in there. And I could use that whole cabinet, and I could definitely put a stackable in there. Um, it might be a trick to get in there. You probably have to have at least two people to wonk and wangle it in there. But, yeah, so, um, you know, I think a stackable would be good as well. But, yeah, happy to hear that. Thanks, uh, E-Travel Happy. Yeah, Tim, I agree with you. The check valve stuck open. Have a good evening, uh, Camp Door 1. Okay, uh, <laughs> Stormer, I'll, I'll be sure and get one on your page. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Two Feathers. Check those out. Likes are very well appreciated. Wow, we're running late, and uh, looks like we got lots of uh, comments still to go, so i got to pick it up here. Oh, Brendan Yankowski, my husband is an HVAC guy and knew it was that. And knew what happened too late. Yeah, bummer. Yep. Jim Bertrand. Hey, Jim. Uh, great to have you on the channel tonight. Uh, totally uh, get that you're just getting in from work kind of late. 10 o'clock up where you're at. And yeah, Dad's doing great. He'll be home tomorrow. Oh, Tom, you had an ice maker in yours. That's a good point. Uh, Tom mentioned that he removed the ice maker from his and it works much better. Uh, we now use the freezer in it. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Thanks, Two Feathers. I vote to keep Rusty. Thank you. Rusty lives. <laughs> you guys want me to keep good old Rusty. You know why I call him Rusty, right? Because when I first got him, everything on it was Rusty. The, the gal I was dating at the time, what did, I forget what she wanted to call it, but it was stupid. Chief, something like that. I don't know. Okay, Bruce uh, Brownham. Question on my own and gas generator has stopped the last two trips down the road. Gas level is okay, suggestion. Yeah, it's probably vapor locking. That's a problem, common problem on those Onans, um, is that when they get hot, where the gas line runs too close to the exhaust manifold, and the gas will actually boil in the gas line, and it turns into vapor, and they call that vapor lock. 
And so there's a couple tricks, uh, one involving uh, clothespins, which I never really understood, but the other involving uh, uh, using some tin foil, uh, aluminum foil, whatever you want to call it, and wrap the gas line from the carburetor back to where it's away from the exhaust manifold or anything that's hot on the top of that owner generator. Uh, wrap that with some foil, and then also make sure that that hose is as far away from the heat source, which is probably the exhaust manifold, if memory serves me correctly, uh, in those onins, and keep that hose away from the heat source, and that will help it stop vapor locking. I guess it was probably two, three weeks ago, uh, we had a, a viewer ask that very question, and the suggestions came back for, I don't remember what the clothespin thing was, but I do know that he wrapped it with foil, and that fixed his problem. So I'm, I'm betting that's probably what it is, it's vapor locking, and uh, if you wrap that gas line uh, from the carburetor back to, you know, where it's away from the heat source, uh, you should be good to go. Check back in and let us know after you do that. Hope that helps. <laughs> uh, Carol Burke says, I found this live stream by accident. How do I find it on purpose? Subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell. Okay, that's all you got to do. And then Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., I'm always here, same time, same bat times, same bat channel. Uh, Two Feather says, I don't have room for a stackable. I'll have to go for the mini model. Yeah, I think those pandas, if memory serves me correctly, I think the pandas are the mini models. They're the smaller ones. Two Feathers. Yeah, and that's a good one, too, and I forgot to mention that, but thank you for reminding me, Aaron. Yeah, Bruce Brown. Uh, check your fuel filter and your air filter, too, and make sure they're good and clean and have been serviced recently. Yeah, uh, Tim Meyer suggests you could put header wrap on the exhaust line. That could that sometimes will work, uh, help keep the heat down. Oh, the clothespins act as a heat sink. Aluminum would be better. Well, that's what I was thinking, but wood is not a good conductor of heat. So that's why I don't know about why wood and why wouldn't clothespins uh, would uh, um, conduct the heat away? But okay, you know, I'll, 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 I've read online where it works for some, and so I get it. Uh, no worries, Jason. Uh, thank you for your answer for your question. Huh? Carol does, says I have subscribed and have rung the bell, yet I haven't been notified. Interesting. Uh, just a quick poll uh, to viewers out there. Uh, are you watching on your laptop, or your cell phone, on a tablet device, or on a desktop? If you'll make the answer in the chat and let me know. And then if you are being notified, if you're subscribed with the, the notification bells ring, uh, mention that over there in the uh, chat window as well. Uh, and let's see. Carol, um, I don't know. I can't answer that. Um, uh, I know that I'm subscribed to some channels, and I get notified on my cell phone, like uh, uh, BE Adventure Partners. Uh, they're those are kids that are but building the bus. They've they've been on a chat a couple times uh, live with this before. Um, really cute kids building an amazing bus. And I'm subscribed and notified on them, and I get theirs, but I'm not sure why that would be. All right, so uh, Aaron says he's on a PC. Carol Burst is on her iMac. Uh, Matthew Tola is on his cell. Tim Myers, eight hours of driving tomorrow. Bedtime for me. Yes, Tim, thank you. Have a great trip to the UP, and we'll talk to you real soon. Uh, Brenda Yankowski says, laptop, got the notification on my phone. <laughs> Who would have thunk? Uh, Tom Downey, in the spirit of no storage space goes unused, says his uh, dryer became his beer storage. <laughs> Carol Burks, I'll just have to be persistent. I have no idea, Carol. Uh, that just escapes me. I will, I'm going to do a little research on that, um, and uh, let me put that on my follow-up on this to, uh, notifications. 
Let me look into that because that's that's really odd. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Two Feathers says, I put it on the calendar. I get my notification on my phone and PC. Okay. Jim Bertrand, have a great week, uh, Jim, and thanks for stopping in. He gets his notifications on smartphone. Um, thanks, Jim. Uh, rest well, my friend, and happy to have you in. Judy Kimbrough gets hers on herself. Uh, the pandas, oh, uh, E-Travel Happy says the pandas aren't stackable. The washer is totally separate from the dryer. But are the pandas full size, like a regular household washer dryer size? Or are they a reduced size? Tom Downey's on an iMac. Uh, Joe Silver's cell phone, iPhone 8. Yes, being notified. Roundtown Scouter. Uh, laptop. E-Travel Happy's on cell phone. Okay. Um, Stormer, I'll get to your question in a second. That reminds me, uh, Matthew Tola says, I get notified every time I post something or go live. You may have to check, click on the bell and change the notification settings. And that's a good point. Uh, if you click on the bell, even though you've already clicked on it, if you click on it, it'll bring up three options, I believe it is. Uh, and it's, and I don't remember exactly what all three options are. Uh, but I think it's all content or all videos or something like that um, is the option you want to take on that, Carol. Hello, Food Porn Chef. Great to have you in. And yes, hello to you. Oh, and Jason Mills says, cell phone and laptop trying to beat YouTube algorithm. Yeah. Well, sometimes, I know that sometimes, like, uh, I'm subscribed to Laura Camp. Uh, she's a maker. She's in Germany. She does some amazing stuff. She built a, a wet bag out of an old banner, out of an old vinyl, vinyl banner on her last video that I thought was just so clever. Great recycling idea reusing something that probably would have just been thrown away and so uh and i don't i get notifications but sometimes uh it's five to ten minutes after the top of the hour and her videos usually premiere i guess it's eight o'clock mountain time but somewhere right around in there or eight o'clock central i don't know she's in germany so it's probably three o'clock in the afternoon there but um uh, so sometimes the notifications don't come for five or ten minutes after the video actually premieres, which is kind of a drag because if it's a, if it's live and you want to interact um, and you're late, you know, it's it's a drag. Okay, so that's a I would look into those uh, two feathers uh, because the pandas are the reduced size, but they still work great, and I'm glad to hear that. A food porn chef says they have reduced size one that gets very great portable washers. And I get notifications on a Samsung Note 20 when you go on so I can keep up. Great. Okay. Uh, Jim Pertrand says top bell option with ringer notica will notify all. Thank you, Jim. Oh, Stormer, thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, that is very greatly appreciated. You're very welcome. Uh, totally don't need to uh, drop the super chat. I'm more than happy to answer your questions, but that helps a lot. Thank you so much. You know, Tom, that's a good one. Uh, Tom says someday we need to discuss what we carry in storage. Let's talk about that next week. Um, let me put a note in here. I think that's good. Uh, okay, Aaron says, yeah, all personalized and none are the notifications. So I think if you take the, if you take the all, uh, Carol, you should be good. Uh, th yep, thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, uh, Bruce uh, Brownham, great, I'll try that. What is about cleaning an air ram so forced air is funneled up in there? Oh, what about, sorry. Great, I'll try that. What about creating an air ram so air is forced up in there? Um, 
Yeah, you know, I suppose you could do that. The only problem with that is, is that that would only work when you're going down the road or when the wind was blowing the exact right direction. Uh, so that might only be a partial solution. But I will note that my biggest complaint with my door cold is when I was going down the road, it wouldn't keep cold at all. It was worthless. Uh, Aaron uh, asks, when is the Zoom live? Probably not till I get home. I don't have enough bandwidth here, Aaron, to do Zoom, uh, even with my cell phone. I tried a couple times. I did a Zoom. Uh, I was working on, I've been working on a video product or a video project, I should say, uh, for a realtor in Pocatello. And um, I was Zooming, trying to do a Zoom call to review some changes to a video and it failed miserably. I could not hold it. Uh, I just didn't have enough bandwidth. And so I decided I was going to have to wait till I get home where I've got lots of bandwidth to do the Zoom calls. But it's coming. Uh, good point. Uh, food, food porn chef. Yeah, like uh, what extra things you need to keep on hand, like a fan belt and whatnot, uh, as far as storage. Yeah, we're going to talk about that for sure. Joe Silvers asked, explain the dollar showing. I'm assuming you mean the dollar sign that's down in um, the uh, chat window. And that is the super chat icon. And what the super chat icon is, is if you love me, you can let me know by dropping a few coins in my pocket. Um, so you'll see like two feathers just very graciously gave me $10. Jason dropped a super chat on us tonight. Um, and it's just a way of saying thank you, uh, that you appreciate what I'm doing. Uh, it's absolutely not necessary. I'm not charging for my advice. My advice is free and that's what it's worth, right? No. Um, so it's just a way of saying thank you and, uh, it's super appreciated. I will say that YouTube takes 40% though. You're welcome, Bruce. He says, appreciate your knowledge. Tom Downey says, I carry my boat inflatable. Well, I carried my golf clubs, <laughs> my waders, my float tube, fishing rods. Okay. We'll talk about that next week. Um, but I'll put on, I'll put together a list. <laughs> Jason Mills, I figured the whole, she's all good now. Oh, <laughs> that's why it got flagged. Okay, I uh, adjusted. <laughs> she's all good now. City Water Connection Fish. Wished everything was that simple of a fix. Yeah, Jason, for sure. Uh, but yeah, so what Jason was saying was, is that when he would turn on his pump, water would come out as freshwater connection on his city where the city water connects. And there is a little check valve in there. And yeah, sometimes you can just get in there with a the finger and pump it. And uh, that will knock whatever's loose. My guess is it was a little grain of sand, maybe some calcium that it build up if you're in an area with hard water. And it was just it was just stuck open. And that's why it was leaking. It's not that uncommon. Okay, Bruce is on his cell. Thank you, Bruce. Um, okay, Sherry P says, I am getting ready to head out Thursday. I wanted to do the road flush, but I can't find any Zep cleaner. Okay, Sherry. Uh, common problem, I'm assuming you're probably in California. And for whatever reason, the state of California, you can't get Zep cleaner. But simple purple concentrated degreaser and simple green concentrated degreaser both work well. The key is concentrated degreaser. If you can find that on the label, you'll be good to go. The other thing is, is if you are in Cali, and let's say you're headed out of state, stop in Nevada, go to Home Depot, pick yourself up a gallon and take it home with you. Because you can't even buy it and have it shipped to California. The same problem with borax up in like Nova Scotia in that far northeast corner of Canada. Uh, you can't get borax up there. And a good alternative to the borax is OxyClean. The OxyClean works great as well. Does the exact same thing. The chemistry is a little different. You use it's sodium perchlorate versus sodium hydroxide or uh, sodium hypochlorite. 
but uh, yeah, that that works well as well. So a concentrated orange cleaner. Jim says damn fuel prices are atrocious. Yeah, you know, Two Feathers was mentioned in that last week. Uh, she mentioned that she had been out to Idaho and it was between three sixty and four dollars a gallon. And I'm still here in Arkansas, and it's not changed. It might have gone up a nickel, or yeah, a nickel. In fact, it's still two seventy nine here in town, at the grocery store. It's two seventy nine uh, in Harrison, where my dad is in the rehab hospital. It's around two eighty four to two eighty nine. Food porn ship. Damn, it's better to send you beer. Yeah, uh, I, I need one tonight. It's awfully warm in here. Oh, Brenda Yankowski, you sell online and carry inventory. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I did that too. Uh, back in 2012, uh, I was doing some online selling and I was carrying small things like incense, incense burners. I had these uh, silk uh, uh, sarongs and stuff like that that we were selling. Actually, I was going to music concerts, music uh, festivals, and I was, uh, you know, uh, bootleg selling. I wasn't a real vendor. I didn't have a booth. But what I ended up doing was in the front curtains of the RV, I would hang the sarongs and stuff like that with a little sign that said for sale, knock on the door. And you'd be surprised how many of those I'd sold. They were really beautiful silk. I was importing them. They were costing me like six dollars, and I was selling them for eighteen. Also, selling bottles of water that I got at Costco for two ninety nine for forty for a dollar a piece. Zepp is at Lowe's. Yeah, uh, Joe. Yeah, you can get Zepp at Lowe's. Uh, you can get it at uh, Walmart. Um, those kinds of places as well. Um, but in, in California, you can't get the Zep Orange Cleaner. <laughs> Thank you, Stormer. I appreciate your very appreciate you very much. Uh, Jim Bertrand says he has a buddy that carries a portable welder. <laughs> well, to each his own. You know, I bet it's come in handy. That's why he carries it. Yeah, if you don't, if you can't get the Zep, just use good old Dawn dish soap. That works. It works well. The Zep, the Zep is nice because it's a really good degreaser, but the Dawn will work as well. Sherry P says, "I checked online and they don't carry it here. I'm in Nevada. Really, in Nevada, you can't get Zep. Interesting. Yeah, I bet you can get simple purple or simple green in the concentrated degreaser." Um, that's the key. Concentrated degreaser. It doesn't necessarily need to be Zep. Brazo. <laughs> oh, thank you, uh, um, Stormer. I did. Uh, I saw it drip by, but sometimes uh, I get so many questions, it's hard to keep up. Uh, don't forget my CO2 propane detector question when towing. I smell no propane. Why things ex exhaust? Thoughts? Yeah, uh, probably exhaust. Um uh, you know, I, I have to admit that there's been a couple of occasions when I've been driving down the road and I would swear I could smell propane. And in one case, I actually stopped and got out and sniffed around because I swore I could smell, smell propane. But no. Um, and so, yeah, it must have just been an exhaust or something like that. Maybe exhaust from cars going by uh, and it just happens to hit you and it smells like propane. Um but uh, I don't remember. Let's see. I can probably go back and find that real quick. Uh, let's see. Sorry about that. Uh, did I miss that? Uh, okay. Sorry. It's not popping right up. So, um, your prop and and the other the other thing that comes to mind on that is um, that you should always leave your CO two propane detector on, and if you don't have a carbon monoxide detector, get one. Uh, in any dwelling that you have a that you have gas as a fuel source for anything, water heater, 
uh, cooking, uh, heat, you definitely want a carbon monoxide detector. Um, doesn't have to be fancy, uh, but I actually replaced mine in my RV. I got a really, well, it was kind of expensive, but I got a smoke and CO detector all in one. Well, there you go, Sherry. That may be all you need to do is just use the simple green you have in your garage. Aaron says uh, gas unleaded there, probably $299. Uh, you're welcome, Joe. Okay, so Brenda, the ZEP we're talking about is what we use when we're uh, managing our holding tanks in our RV. I'd recommend that you go uh, watch the video on my channel on uh, easily uh, ridding yourself of RV stinks. <laughs> You know, I should remember that, and I just don't remember the, the name of the dang video. RV How To Easily Get Rid of Your Black Tank Smells in Your RV. Uh, you'll find it on my channel, and uh, the ZEP we use in our gray tank when we're doing the road flush. Um, I won't go into all the details here because it's already 9.30. The, the time is just flying by. We still have 30 people connected. Lots of questions coming in, so we'll go for a little bit longer. I'm just about out of throat, though, or voice. Uh, but... And then the borax you hear us joking about all the time is what we're using in our holding tanks to knock down the smells. Uh, but yeah, go uh, watch the video. It's definitely worth the investment of 27 minutes. Uh, you'll have a much better understanding of how to manage your RV's holding tanks when you're done if you haven't watched it already. I always start at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Adjust for your own time zone. Uh, Bruce Brownham asks, what time do you usually start? 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Okay, there we go. Aaron Jemson, who is doing camp hosting work right now in a man of colonies, he says, we get a lot of RVs that come in to the park and their CO2 detectors are going off when we park them. It's definitely from the exhaust. There you go. You're welcome. Thank you, Stormer. Cheryl P. Score! Found one gallon of simple green in the garage. You got her covered. <laughs> and you were wondering what you were going to use it for, weren't you? Great, Sherry. I'm happy that we got you going there. Two Feathers lives in Washington and gas is high. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Aaron. Be sure and go check out uh, uh, Aaron's channel uh, over at uh, Three Tails RV. Uh, he uh, posted a really cool little short video uh, the other day of uh, some uh, stuff around uh, uh, Mana Colonies there. It was kind of fun. Brenda Yankowski says, I'll check it out. Thanks. I use Barack's on Dawn and have no issues with the black tank. Yeah, well, I give you a, uh, a trick on how to clean your gray tanks um, when you're when you're going down the road. We, I call it the road flush. And that's where you put this, the, the Borax and the uh, dish soap in your black tank and or the Zep or Simple Green in your uh, 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 gray tank. And drive down the road and the sloshing helps scrub those tanks out. But if you're already using Borax and Dawn, you're probably in great shape. You probably don't need to worry about it. But you might enjoy the video nonetheless. Uh, Dan Popico, Pope, Pope Pope um, how much Borax do you use in the tanks? Okay, I usually start with a quarter to a half a cup, depending upon how big your holding tank is. Like in my RV, the black tank is 40 gallons. And I would usually start with two gallons, maybe three in the holding tank, and a quarter to a half a cup of borax. And then during the week, or however long you're sitting there using the tank, but before the next dump, uh, if it starts to smell a little bit, just add a little bit more, a quarter cup. Fill the bowl with some water. Put you know half a bowl of water in the toilet. Add the borax to that. Use your toilet brush or whatever to swirl it up, mix it up, drop it in the tank. And I'll guarantee you, if there's any smell, it'll be gone instantly. I mean, it's gone in five minutes. It's just, it's magic the way it works. Uh, but so, um, and then during the winter, uh, when I was full time and, and the daytime temperatures below 75 on average, I didn't have to add anything to my tanks. Uh, I could run a whole week and uh, not have to add anything to my tank. So start with a quarter to a half a cup and then add another quarter to a half in the middle of the cycle if it starts to smell and you're feeling lazy and you don't want to go dump your tank. 
<laughs> uh, Matthew Tola, Lower Michigan, three to three fifty a gallon. Yeah. Holy snapping! Ooh, Arsels. Tom Downey, I saw seven dollars near or I five north. I pay three sixty. Yeah, I saw some five fifty gallon, uh, fifty nine a gallon in Cali uh, on the on a news report I was watching the other day. Thank you, Aaron, as always, for jumping right on that and getting those uh, links up. I greatly appreciate that. You're welcome, Dan. Uh, happy to help. All right. Any last questions? Uh, throw them over there in the chat window. And if I have missed a question tonight, I apologize. Uh, you could re-ask it, and I will try to answer you. Otherwise, uh, I think we'll probably wrap her up here. We'll give you just a minute to kind of throw some any last-minute things out there in the chat window. I'm going to do a couple of housekeeping things, and then I'm going to call it a night myself. Okay, well, you know, I really appreciate it. The time flew by tonight. As always, we had great questions, uh, great uh, 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 going back and forth with folks. The Super Chats, amazing. I thank you so much for that. I thank you so much for your questions, uh, your comments. Uh, I'm happy to be building this community here and providing a safe place where new and old RVers can come together and help each other out and maybe prevent you from making mistakes that we made. Last, one last commercial, support my Amazon store by visiting the link in the description below. I appreciate that. Hit my website up, lots of great articles out there. Some photography that, you know, one of my hobbies is photography. I've got some pretty cool pictures up there. Uh, I think that'll probably do it. Any last questions? You're welcome, Jim. You're welcome, Brenda. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Tom. Good night, Stormer. Matthew, uh, the black tank most of the time bigger than the gray. Um, no, not always. Because my gray tank is 45 and my black is 40. And I always fill my gray tank before my black tank fills when I'm out boondocking or when I'm not hooked up. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty sure my gray is 45 and my black is 40. I don't know that that's a hard and fast rule for our, our, all RVs, though. Um, okay. Seems like I'm getting more out of my gray than my black. Yeah, probably because your gray tank's a little bit bigger. I, I think that's typically the way they build them. You're welcome, Bruce. It's great to have you in as a new one, uh, visitor to the chat and the live stream. Uh, CRC isn't available. What else is there? Look for liquid wrench silicone, and you can get that at uh, Harbor Freight Tools if there's one of those uh, whereby you were near where you live. Uh, Harbor Freight Tools has the uh, liquid wrench for, for the CRC, and it's under five bucks for a can. Thank you, E-Travel Happy. Love you. Thank you, Aaron. Great to have you in. Thanks, everybody. We're going to call it a night. Until next week, thanks again for watching. I sure do appreciate it. And we'll see you. Peace. Good night. Thank you, Matthew. You're very welcome. Great chat. Super appreciative. Where's the off button now? <laughs> Good night.